of advertisements and stuff like that. So let me see if I can just go ahead and this is what I use when I'm trying to go, but um, I'm still trying to do the, uh, let's actually go to the angular.java. Still trying to do these steps, install these, and I was trying to figure out where to plug this command in because it's, you know, for a terminal, and it even says, you know, type this into the terminal uh, or the command line, you know, to install the ng so you can start typing these things and they'll be interpreted by the npm angular command line interface. Um, so, yeah, still haven't figured that out. I, I realized there's a. Uh oh, did I get disconnected? No? Looks good. Okay, um, I did realize that there's a there is a command line in Visual Studios. I mean, it's been a while since I've used Visual Studio Studios. That's actually the only IDE I've used professionally, so it's kind of funny, but um, ironic maybe. Um, but anyways, it didn't work there. I tried it in PowerShell, didn't work there. You know, so I'll, I'll keep fiddling with that. But um, and then same with Bitbucket. Once I get a little more comfortable with uh, basically how to upload files to it and all that good stuff, I mean GitHub. This kind of made me a little lazy. All I gotta do is just click the button to create a file. I know there's the commands like you know, um, push, check out, you know, branch, all that good stuff. And I actually am I'm gonna be asking one of my colleagues uh, for a little advice on that if I can't figure that out again, which we'll see how that goes. But anyways, back to the uh, matter at hand. We have some JavaScript files, and actually let me close that color picker because that is gonna lag me down. Um, but yeah, that color picker. Let me go ahead and let's put it in the notes. Um, let's put it all the way down at the bottom. See, we did a bunch of stuff last time, kind of just getting ready for that interview. And then, let's see, so there's the color picker for more of a web design um, link. There you go. So, yeah, that's really handy. There's other stuff out there. Um, and of course, you can, you know, once you find some colors, or a color palette that you like for your website, you can always um, just kind of start plugging in different numbers that are similar to it. Because, um, yeah, you know, the way the CSS works um, as far as colors, let's go ahead and just pull up. I mean, any of them. I've got 366 for my um, my background color of my OSCS, the Open Source Computer Science Project. So it's that kind of like olive green ish, you know, kind of mellow. Um, Basically, I'm just trying to go for something that's easy on the eyes. And then the examples that we're going to go over today, let's see. Well, let's go ahead and go to the, the random quote machine because that's that's a good indicator. And then the second one I want to do is Arco, Arco Map. Um, so basically, i got to go all the way to the back. These are in older areas since I haven't updated them. Recently, I haven't edited them, anything like that. Uh, well, let's see. Yeah, the random quote machine. This one was a fun one. This was an assignment for a uh, freecodecamp.com. That is, that's actually how I figured, I found out about um, CodePen. You know, they were very adamant that you create projects on this, and it is super helpful. So let's, without further ado, let's get the, uh, get the files going for, so you can see, let's see, quote, Yes. No main, don't need that. Okay. And actually take care of all that. There we go. So this is the code. Actually already I can see there's a bunch of uh stuff I have commented out. So and I I usually kind of put that down at the bottom and there there could be a couple of reasons for why I do this. So um when something doesn't work, I like to just kind of push it down and then no, I'll deal with it later type area. Or if something gave me a hard time or it was a certain uh, interesting thing that happened, I'll also take the code and put it down. Like, see here, this almost looks more like a, a completed function. So maybe maybe this is something I did that worked, but yeah, validating the empty field. I'm trying to think in regards to the quote machine. Yeah. Oh, a switch statement. This is actually the first I'm really looking at this like three years um, or even longer or no this was around that time about three years ago I was doing a bunch of free code camp stuff so um yeah so basically this is dealing with quote objects so this is going to be very similar to uh, the question Java file that we looked at right here 
um, you know, you're making objects and then you're cycling through the objects. So that's why the obs array, objects array. Um, so yeah, Q obs zero. Yeah, question objects. I don't know why I went OBS, but anyways, there, there they are. There's five quotes. Here they are in like drawn out. See, and then I have a quote array. And I wonder if I actually still use both of these. Yeah, oh, what did I just click? Did something. Control Z. Ah, Control V. All right, I don't know what I did. Um, let's go back up. It looked like. Well, first off, I can tell you I don't like that. So I'm gonna change that. Um, it's a little cramped for my my liking, but there you go. So there's object declarations. Um, style display none. Hmm. So this was a uh, this was my first work with um, changing the CS or CSS dynamically, changing the style of the website. Um, yeah, as you can see here, I have it in conjunction with changing the quote. So what happens is, is that there will be a button. In fact, let me look at it. Um, starts off with a quote. Like this one's on Pablo Picasso. Oh, and there's Twitter's Twitter stuff in here. There's a tweet button, which I, I don't think it works. So if you go to this, um, oh yeah, and then this is actually in that jumble of uh, of links that I dropped in the chat. Let's see. We can go ahead and do it again so you can follow along. Um, this one's the quote machine specifically. Okay. And it's just a very simple program that cycles through uh, famous quotes that I have stored um, in these objects. And along with the author or who, who said the quote, um, <laughs> Homer. Um, and then an index. And it just cycles through each of these objects and it displays them. So this is a good uh, example of how to kind of interact with JavaScript in your HTML. So, and also, while I'm thinking of it, I did not upload these to the GitHubs yet. So, I mean, it doesn't look like we have anyone hanging out right now. But um, by the time I upload this to YouTube, I will definitely have it. But let's go ahead and... Go back to my JavaScript GitHub and make sure that this file is in there as well. Add file. Quote machine dot JS. No. Nope. Hmm. There we go. So now the JavaScript is. I love how the colors change too. I mean, like it's cool to see it here, like you know, in case and break. But then when you see it on another IDE or like the way that you can see the files on GitHub, it changes to some really cool colors. Like document actually changes, and I imagine that would happen um, if I was using a better IDE than Eclipse for. Actually, I wouldn't count it out. There's there's a good chance Eclipse can handle JavaScript. I'm just not doing it correctly. So I might have to look at that. But anyways, I, staying on task here, I've just committed JavaScript. Let me go ahead and throw out the CSS. Um, and we'll do that here as well. So you can look at it while I'm messing around with GitHub. Um, did I just name it quote? Yeah, quote JS, quote CSS. Okay. We're getting quite a few files on this one. I might want to change to a new project. Uh, this is everything, all my Java, all my JavaScript, um, even some notes. So, all right. And already I can tell it's a little congested. I apologize. So I'll actually go ahead and go through and fix that. It's easy to see. You'll notice I have a lot of stuff commented out, so I'm very indecisive, and that's probably why um, web development isn't 
one of my favorite. I mean, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. I have a lot of fun doing it. But when I get to the web design side of it, I just get lost in the weeds. Like, I mean, I, it's, I start changing colors. I start moving things around. And, you know, before I know it, five hours have gone by and I've just basically changed and erased and changed and erased and I'm just back at square one. So, yeah, it's kind of a low paid thing. But anyways, uh, this is the CSS. So I have, you know, rows, buttons, um, an unused bit of code for new quote form, quote in. So I'm trying to see what would be, well, let's go ahead and make sure we add that to the GitHub. So new file, this one's quote machine, dot CSS. Okay, and even that changes colors too. That's awesome. It has the, although I do want to, real quick, just adding the spacing because it just it's, it looks cleaner. It's easier for other people to kind of take a look at and understand what's going on too. I mean, when it's all bunched together and stuff, it might be a little harder to understand. So, all right, let's go ahead and save that file. So the CSS is up now. Let's hit the HTML. Okay. And while I'm doing that, let's go ahead and throw it up here. Kind of want to look at it, and we'll go through a lot of this. Let's see. So quote HTML. And oh, super simple HTML. Although it does kind of run off the screen there. Let me go ahead. Since a uh, thing about HTML. It really doesn't matter. You could do this. In fact, let's go ahead and space it over so you can tell it's, it's with that. But as long as you have the angle brackets, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can, although be careful with that. I say that it doesn't matter, but it does matter. Keep it somewhat clean. Like, see how I have cascading? Like, as you go into areas like this division, you know, these things are contained within this division. Ooh. See, already I'd say, I want to maybe do that. I don't know why that is. I'd put that here. Yeah, because you usually want to. In fact, I don't even know why this is on two separate lines. Let's go ahead and. And I know this is kind of pointless to change it here because this is just for reference. But, you know, I really need to make sure that I make the changes on the GitHub. But yeah, see, like this is out of line. Like, and that is in this div. All of this. Do you want to put that? So since this is contained in with it, I'm going to put it indented a little bit. The BRs, this is my hacky way of putting in a space. So if I want something to be separated a little bit, I'll just throw in breaks. Um, and then later, if I, you know, I think it to do it, I'll go back and, uh-oh, what's this? URL. This is the quote box. It's got a form. That might be part of a, I'm going to pull up the actual website again, just to kind of have an idea of what's going on while I do this. So, yeah, next quote. So this is not the best. I would actually probably change this name, um, just the click func, uh, click function. But I would say like, you know, like next quote or get quote. Ooh. Actually, this is kind of, so I have the IDs. This looks like it's something to deal with the Twitter tweet. Yeah, I've got a button that doesn't, oh, that's, that's broken. All right, so apparently if you click the tweet this button, it does do the same function as an X quote. So I think that's because I, I should just hide it from view. Well, I'll leave it in there for now because it is kind of cool to see like there's, you know, the Twitter interface. So you have, I mean, I have the Twitter logo, although it is kind of running into. So I was really big on shadows. I'll say that. So when you do check this out, if you do take a look at it, you'll see there's shadows below, uh, below the buttons. Um, I just thought that was just really cool. In fact, let's, uh, let's go 
go back to the CSS and look at what's that what that's going on with. So next quote, this is a it has an ID, but it also has a class. So robot, robot, and we have yeah, right here, box shadow. That's what I was thinking of. So if you add a box shadow, then you're adding well a shadow for the box, a text box, a button. You can slap this on anything. I wouldn't go too hog wild with it because it does kind of a little bit goes a long way as far as appearances go. Um, but yeah, that's the CSS doing that. And then also this Twitter ad ID. Also, this is one thing about um, design that I often forget is the difference between the number sign and the dot. So I believe this is class. This is ID. So the next quote, if you look at the uh, HTML, we have next quote as the ID. Yep, so there's some quick ver verification there. We um, specify this ID here. So ID equals next quote. Then the CSS, the corresponding CSS, has next quote, pound sign, number sign, hashtag. <laughs> and then there's that. And I have this all commented out because I think because I started getting into, yeah, that's what it looks like. I started getting into the situation where I was changing each button individually, and I wanted to have multiple buttons, like add quote. I don't see a... I don't see an ID for add quote. Let's go back to the HTML. So add quote is interesting. So it does have an ID. Did I just not see it in here? Let's do it. Nope. Maybe I could do the whole thing, but I'm pretty sure if you don't find the first one the ad it'll find that but so I, I didn't actually finish so that makes sense so I left it there in the HTML even though it doesn't actually do anything um, so I have the option to customize these buttons individually or I can just change all three buttons simultaneously by changing the row button on the CSS and now that I'm saying these names out loud I don't think I shortened button to butt um, just saying but like row button. Anyway, I guess it kind of sounds like robot, but no, eh, either way. Just kind of little personal preferences. I mean, because you got to remember the only people that are going to be seeing this are your coworkers or, you know, or like this, you know, if you're trying to teach someone else how to do this stuff. Oh, this is the JavaScript. Okay. So I was going back to the HTML. Um, in fact, let's actually do that. Let's move that there. Can I do that? I'm going to freak out this here come on there just because this is how if you're familiar with code pen this is how they have it laid out your html is on the left your css is in the middle and your javascript is on the right and it's super handy you can just kind of go back and forth um, and it also renders on the fly too you just hit the save button and it'll update um, depending on what you have you might have to like refresh it or hit run again but like if you're changing javascript code i believe but you're just doing little things like changing the appearance of it, like changing a color, changing a, the size of an element. You can just hit save and then you might have to scroll down. That's one of the big things about my, uh, my OSCS page because it's just so long. Um, if, I make it, if I'm making changes down at the bottom, uh, like down where like the binary notation section is and all that, or the boo-boo-boo, every time I make a change, I have to hit save and then I have to scroll all the way down just to see the change reflected. But it's still... A lot faster than um, like the old way I used to do web dev is I would change a file, have to, you know, actually, no, I guess it was kind of on the fly as well. You change the file, you refresh the browser, but you, you're doing this jumping back and forth. And a lot of the dev I did was in um, either Vim or, oh, Sublime 3. And so that I might actually be doing that editor here very soon. I mean, Eclipse is great, but we do have all these red squigglies and all that. Whereas with Sublime 3, actually, do I? Well, I can't change the. I'll have to wait till the next video, I believe. I don't want to mess anything up. But yeah, Sublime 3 is easily like my favorite IDE. It's not even really much of an IDE, it's more of just a text editor. But it has all the colorful words. Um, it's very creative with its schemes. And it has um, a toggle 
And that's actually what we're going to get into um, very soon with the Arco map. Basically, any of the Arco projects that I did, I included a toggle function where you can change the appearance of the website just with a click of a button. And there's a, many different ways you can do it. Um, in fact, let's uh, go ahead and finish up with quotes, and then we'll get to Arco Math, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The reason I bring this up, though, is because if we look at the JavaScript for this, we're actually changing, you know, the style. So we've got the color, background color. We're doing it for different elements too. So we've got the body, the quote box. Um, we're using different colors. So actually, wait a minute. Case one. I'm gonna cycle through. So we've got Broncos theme. We've got like a weird, uh, like a Packers theme. We've got like a beat theme. I don't know the beat diggers in Colorado here. The brush deep beat diggers. Um, we've got like a Vikings theme, and then you've got like a, I don't know Steelers or a B theme. I, I didn't intend to do football colors except for Broncos, but um, you know I was just trying to figure out like this was a way to play around with colors that may work together, may not. Like the yellow and black one, the kind of bumblebee theme. It's a little hard on the eyes. It's a little bright. Um, then you switch from that to the Broncos theme, which is a little easier on the eyes, but then it's kind of hard to read. So, and again, I'm going to leave this as is because I want this to be an example of. Maybe don't go with these colors. Maybe take a little more time and do different shades, variants, um, using that color picker site. It's super easy. Um, but yeah, let's see. Any fool can use a computer. Many do. <laughs> Computers are like bikinis. They save people a lot of guesswork. Okay, no, it's not as PC. That's what's cool about working with computers. They don't argue. They remember everything, and they don't drink all your beer. Yeah, so these are just, um, I've picked some of the funnier or, or more funny quotes that I found about computers. Actually, this one, oh, there we go. Here, so it's in the objects. So we got one from Homer, we got from Paul, Sam, Pablo. Yeah, Pablo Picasso. I don't know if that one's actually real. See, I don't know if I was trolling or not. Anyways. Feel free to look it up on your own time. You can look up these quotes or you can add your own quotes, you know, make your own cycle through, maybe change variable names, make them a little more relevant. Like these are okay. Like a quote array is an array of quotes. So, you know, you can tell my thinking there, although I'm pretty sure I don't actually use this. I thought it used to be if you clicked on one, all of them would highlight. Maybe that's an old program. But anyways, um, so you have your objects, you have your quotes. And then this is what I actually use. So I'm using the same concept. I'm using an array. Actually, quote array, maybe that does. That's obs array. Got the quote indexes. Well, either way. So here's that, that buzzword, inner HTML. That's what I was talking about back with the calculator program. This is how you, you change what it exists for the element, so then you know, you use all of this. In fact, why did I put this in line? That's just, sorry, that's a little tacky. Like I would actually do like this. Or, well, I guess that might, that looks more like C++. I did that a lot with like header files. Um, have like that little inline, yeah, whatever. And again, this doesn't change much because the GitHub is where the changes really need to exist. Because that's where you can actually get the files, so. Or you can be copying this down as you're watching, I guess. But let's see. So, all right. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that. Oh, yeah, let's just keep going. So then you have a, the click function, which happens when you click either the next quote or the tweet this. Doesn't look the add quote. Oh, oh, cool. I don't think I actually. Uh, Never mind. So if you click the add quote button, let's go back to the HTML. Um, there's this down here, add quote, which I have the ID for. That's right. But I don't actually have CSS that corresponds to the ID. However, when you click this button, it brings up this form. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Like the second half of the whole code is the form. So we have a div for a new quote form. 
This is a way for the user to input their own quote and their name. So you can say, I said this, and this is what I said. Um, and then there's a submit button down here, uh, on click add quote. So then let's go back to the JavaScript and see that I do have So already I know what's what needs to happen with this, right? At least I have a good idea. I shouldn't say I know, but I need parameters. And not only that, I need to get the parameters passed from. So like, now I know this takes some doing, but it's it's a simple lookup at W3 schools to kind of figure out how to work with forms. Um, they're very straightforward with uh, how forms work. Basically, you get the input. So we have type, text, name. I mean, it might be by name or value. Uh, no. Either way, something needs to be passed to this function. So once you pass the quote and the name, like those are the two parameters. So you have name, yeah, off name. I'm pretty sure this is how you do it. That's the tag. So you can do it by like, should I try it? Because then we got to change this so a hard coded index of four but I think we can pull the index whatever it is oh no we set the index right but we keep track of it quote by quote index so here we start at one which is weird Sorry, I'm, I'm rediscovering all this while we're, while we're looking at it. But anyways, I might actually go back and do some of that. But I do want to go ahead and get to the Arco map because that is something that is a lot more relevant. I mean, this is, you know, fun code to do. But um, the other one, the next example is actually something that I'll be doing to my o OSCS site, um, adding functionality. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So we've pretty much gone through this. I have an idea of how I want to fix it. I mean, the add quote is still, in fact, let's go ahead and add a note. Um, add parameters from HTML. I will add that in GitHub. Let's go ahead and do a quote machine. I did not do quote machine HTML yet. Let me go ahead and do that as well. Um, but real quick, add quote, edit, go down to add quote, add parameters from HTML. Okay, because I do want to go back and fix that, but I don't want to take time on the stream to go do that. So I'll mess with that on my own time and go ahead and get the HTML before I forget. So anyone who is interested in the quote machine, you can now go to the GitHub and have all three of the files in just a second. Let's commit changes. Yeah, I've been spoiled with the, the website guru. Um, let's see. JavaScript, add file. This is quote machine HTML. Okay. Yeah, super simple, really short. Half of it's the buttons, half of it's the well, and there's a little section for the, the quote box. So literally just a one line of the quote box div. So I'm gonna real quick. Yeah, that's that's where the quotes populate, and then you've got the row with the buttons. It's, they're actually vertical, so yeah, it's it's all good fun. So, anyways, that file is committed. So, yep, quote machine is up there. Now the next one, Arco Map. So these were a series. I actually worked for um, a company called KiwiCo way back in the day. I was in the call center, um, and it's a really cool company. It's uh, they send out educational crates, like little boxes of like paper projects and stuff, and like little plastic things, um, and they're really cool. They have like a little story. It's a little science experiment in a crate. And so, you know, it's a lot of mostly grandparents getting the, or parents getting these for their kids. Um, it was just, I, I really like the concept. All right. So I have two Arco maps. Let's see. 
I mean, they all work, right? Right? They don't. Uh oh. Never mind. Let me go back to. Let's try the other auto map. There we go. Okay. No, no. Cricket, new one. Cricket. Okay, so I, I had cricket twice. Oh. I know why. So this is more of like a copyright situation. These are the titles. So I should change that. Hmm. Should I change that? I know. Oops. Okay, so saunter. Well, let me go ahead and um, no, let's see. I'll have to do that pretty quick. And actually, I should do that before I upload the files to GitHub. So basically, what what's going on is I left the titles that Kiwico actually uses. So, um, which I think there's something there's there's a chance that people could take issue with that um so i'm going to go ahead and change it to the terms that i had which is saunter walk go ahead and just type it go ahead and start a new one um, new class for arco map um so i have js this one's the HTML. So we'll do the HTML first. HTML for this one. Let me go ahead and change it real quick. Um, so saunter walk. Actually, I'm going to do. Jog. Run. Sprint. Yes. Because I needed this many labels for the theme names. So these are the different difficulty types. So that was just kind of my own scheme that I did to avoid copyright infringement issues. So let me go ahead and change that. So we have saunter, we have walk, but, oh, oops. I also, before I do that, I need to put in quotes, cricket, just cricket, koala. I mean, it is a really cool system. Like they do animal types, or creature types. I guess cricket is a bug. Um, for their for their crates, for their age levels. So, and that's why I focus so heavily on being able to dynamically change the CSS via JavaScript, because I saw a business need for this. Like you would, if you were to have a website that corresponded with this stuff, to actually have this hosted online for people to access or have you know they could even have paid accounts whatever was what i was see, doodle that's what i was trying to pitch to them but they they weren't interested they wanted to stay with the brand or the crates and that's fine um let's see so I have all the comments. That's another thing. Let me go ahead and expand. Okay. All right. I'll saunter walk. Power walk. Jog. Run. Sprint. Okay. Hit save. All right. Now. I feel good about there we go so there's the html for arco map um and while i'm thinking about it should
I have both of them pulled up. I should do like the calculator one. Change the other one to bugs. So let's see. This one doesn't work. You click the buttons, nothing happens. Rather than really look into it, I was probably changing something else. Let's see, bugged. There we go. So now if you're looking through the code pen, you'll see which one is the better version, the one with more functionality. And it still doesn't have. Okay, so yeah, I can already see there's two spots for where you check the answer. Actually, does this change? Oh, it does. Cool. So if you go through saunter, walk, power walk, jog, run, sprint, it actually changes the numbers. Now, I kept it very simple. Um, that is actually something I wanted to do. I don't know if uh, I might cut this stream and then do a start a new stream because I want to do some live JavaScript programming like from scratch and make something on camera just where you can see the thought process of how to like create a program. And I want to do, I have a great idea for it and it, it'll actually work in concert with this. So let's go ahead and make sure. So we have the HTML there. Let's go ahead and add it to GitHub. So if, you're, if you want to follow along with your own code pen, you can plop this stuff down in. Um, and that's totally fine, by the way. Again, this is all, it's on GitHub. It's public. Like, you know, if you make money off of it, cool. But no, <laughs> basically, this is meant to be shared. Like these concepts, these ideas, like, you know, and improved upon too. So like definitely, definitely improve upon them. Let's see, R code. HTML. Yeah. Actually, I think I saw. Yeah. Well, like one of my followers, uh, Matan, um, was talking about, he was thinking about making a website. So if you end up watching this, feel free to take all this, you know, go ahead and practice. I don't know what level you're at, where you're at, but. Here's your here's your jumping off point. Ooh, also I just noticed you might want to change this stuff. So this is right there. These are the terms that KiwiCo uses for their crate um, tiers. So this is where it could be copyright stuff. So if you do make anything professional, make sure you change this. I put them in uh, quotes over here and the parentheses. There's kind of an issue there. You might have to do like actually, or just take the quotes out. I mean, I just left them in there for. This is what the buttons used to say, and it's also right here in the actual. Um, so it's embedded in JavaScript, so I would have to go and change it in the JavaScript as well, which I might do that. But anyways, the, the basic concept is you have all these buttons. You click them, it changes colors. Not only does it change colors, but it changes the numbers that you're working with in the solution box. So it starts off with 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 3 plus 3, and three plus three and so on until you get through all of them. Um, I can then go back to it. Let's go ahead and save HTML. And then let's go ahead and pull the CSS and put that in the GitHub. There we go, wonderful. Ooh, except for we still have that bunching. Let's go ahead and fix that before I commit it. Okay, it wasn't too much, but so now the CSS is up and we need that here so you can see at home. Echo math CSS. Okay. There we go. It's very simple. And again, I'll do that. Let's kind of add some spacing so you can tell each piece of code. There you go. So this is the styling. Um, you've got your equate window, your equate window solution, brand logo, back or your, your header, your body. So yeah. And this was back when I was still playing around with margins and padding. So uh, an important aspect of web design is uh, being able to work with padding and margins. But again, that's another thing that I, I go down the rabbit hole. I start changing things, you know. And this isn't even right, Mar or margin top, I guess. But you could also do, like, margin, one, two, three, four. Like have top, is it top right, down, left, I believe. Pretty sure that's what it is. but. 
anyways, there's, and that's a different way to edit it. Let me see if there's, well, either way, and actually I'm going to take that back out because I think, you know, you got to do percents or pixels or, but yeah, I believe with padding and margin, it's been a while since I've done changes like that, but it's an easier way instead of typing margin top, margin right, margin bottom, margin left, which you can do either way. But anyway, so this is the CSS and we have that there. Let's go ahead and grab the JavaScript. So arguably the most important part of this project. Let me go ahead and throw that up here. Okay. Marco map JS. Yeah, we've got a lot of files. I'll probably switch projects here soon. Um, there we go. So this is the JavaScript that powers Arco Math. It's very scattered. So we have some objects. Ah, right. So these are the hard-coded question objects. And this is what I want to do for my live demo for the JavaScript thing. I, I've been thinking through this idea. I want to create a program that generates questions. So this is, you know, first, second, answer. 7 plus 7 equals 14. So these are very basic math equations, you know, very basic addition. And it is all addition. Yeah, I haven't even started with. So that's the other thing I'm thinking of, is if you have, you know, you could do a loop, and you could do a couple of variables to change first and second, and then you would calculate the answer dynamically or on the fly at runtime. So you would go through a loop with um, a certain parameters and create these objects. Hmm. Yeah, it'd be interesting to do, although I might already see a problem with, you know, like, what is Java, does JavaScript use constructors or does, you know, pretty sure it does, but I haven't done a lot of that. I mean, most of my objects are hard coded, like I've, I've created them, you know, intentionally beforehand. So they already exist pre runtime. So anyways, um, that's what I want to do. We'll be trying to do that. Yeah, like I said, I'll split that up. So we have this one where we're just, you know, demoing existing JavaScript. So yeah, and see, and this is what I would need to change. So we have the old terminology that is KiwiCo specific. So I would need to change that to, you know, saunter, sprint, jog, all those different ones that I had. Um, and this banner too. So it says what was chosen. So you have instant confirmation that you click a button, you got what you were requesting. You know, there's no confusion. Um, and on the website, it does now say saunter, walk, power walk, jog, run, sprint. Did I actually that? I think, ah, jeez. That's going to be some, it's going to be some doing. So actually, that's something I'll do off camera. I'll go ahead and go through and change this stuff. And But I do want to go ahead and have it um, on the GitHub. And I'll change it on here as well. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It would be better to change it and then not have to change it. Actually, huh. No, you're right, Alex. Don't change it twice. All right, I'm going to change it in CodePen and then I'll upload it to GitHub. So I'll just have a little note here, write a note to myself. Let's see. Change Arco math key code terms. There we go. And then, so this one won't be readily available until I finish that. So it will be a little bit, but um, I'll go ahead and do that. So, anyways, what's going on here is we have our objects. Um, we have some other variables here. So we, we initialize first, second, and answer just as some numbers. We have answer input as an empty string. We have global brand set to none which is actually string none, it's not like a keyword none. Um, something to just kind of take note. So yeah, I'm gonna create some objects. So these are the basic questions. So this is what the, and this is, sorry, the backstory of this whole project is, this is the early version of hand raise. This is the project I wanna work on 
where you know grade school students k through 12 level you know kids can go to these websites and interact with the with them answer questions eventually get to the point where they get scores that are maintained you know maybe have them have a login user account so there's some functionality i need to work on and they can create an account and then they solve the questions they get the points and maybe get rewards i don't know i mean i haven't figured thought that far yet but Basically, the reward is, is like, if you're struggling with math, you go to this site, no judgments, nobody, you know, looking down on you and thinking, oh, they're dumb, whatever. Anything that goes through a kid's head, because you know it's ridiculous, but it, it's there. Everybody has it. The fears, the concerns, you know, the paranoia, and it basically just leads to the kid not succeeding, you know, or just being okay with it. You know, they're like, ah, I don't need to know this. That's fine. Whatever. You know, so, anyways. That's the, the idea behind this. And you want to make it fun. So, hence, um, and easy to use, too. The, the user experience, the user, usability, um, the interaction, the interface, the front end, all of that. It needs to be clean. It needs to look cool, like, you know, appealing. And that's why I was thinking, you know, this one, it's very easy. You click the button. So, you know, how, how hard do I want the problems? Do I want to saunter? Do I want to walk? Do I want to power walk? Do I want to jog? Do I want to run? Do I want to sprint? You know? So, and, and those are subject to change too. You could think of any kind of levels of difficulty. So, um, I think a lot of video games that you play, they all have the different uh, difficulty levels and they like to describe them differently. So, you can get pretty creative with that. Let's see. I was just looking here. So, each one of these cases, so this is what happens when you click the button switch brand. Or actually, no, this is a function that, let's go back to the, the HTML. Switch brand actually happens with every on click. It calls the same function for all of these buttons, but then it feeds it a different parameter of what difficulty level to change it to. And then you have your let's see, brand logo. What is that? Oh, that was that's a little placeholder. So one thing I haven't figured out with CodePen is how to have images. So then you can load them. I mean, I suppose you could have a, have it point to some website image then load it from there. I don't know. It's not good practice. You want your images in a folder in your project. So they can just pull from there. But this is where you would put, yeah, see, source is empty. It's blank. Um, but if you did have a brand logo or some image you wanted loaded, then I would also comment this out, maybe. It doesn't do anything. If you had an alt, like alt brand logo. That's what you would have usually. So you, if you had this implemented, so you would know when it's not functioning properly. So for whatever reason, usually it's a permissions error or the image isn't in the right place. So this is like, you know, dot, dot, slash, image, and then brand, logo, dot, PNG, or whatever. You know, that, that would be an example. You know, you, you'd give a relative path with this dot, dot, from your project folder, wherever you're at, or you might not even need the dot dot. If you have your, depending on how you set up the, the file system for your website, it can change a lot. And that's also a really big time suck with web development. It's just kind of organizing your files um, to a way that it works. Because you also have to do the CSS. You need to link that, you know, back up here. Um, and you need to make sure that's functioning. And that you'll see right away. If you don't have your CSS linked, <laughs> your website will just look very, it'll look like this. It look like just this stuff. I mean, very basic white background, text. You know, it won't have any colors or any. You know, you'll you'll know. But with images, yeah, that's something to do. And then the alt, it'll say brand logo in text where the picture should be. If for whatever reason, the browser that is trying to access your website can't find the image that this is pointing to. So if this doesn't exist, or if the permissions aren't set to where you know anyone can see the image. So we're getting back into that whole Chamad thing, like where you change the permissions. You need to make it to where the world can read it, the world can see it, and stuff like that. But also be very careful about what permissions you give the world. So, so there's that whole other spiel for another day. Um, yeah, and then here's that class I was, was looking at. So we have get element by ID. So that H1-1 looks like the banner that's going across the screen. I really wish I could just have that actual website up here, but, oh. 
this is, let me see. Well, first of all, okay, let's go ahead and do this. While we're talking about Arco Math, here is the link for that. So, ta da. And also, I believe it's in the GitHub notes. So, again, I'll try to put this. Oh, yeah, I gotta change all that before I put it in. Basically, I wanna change all of this to saunter, walk. No, I'm not gonna do that. Well, how am I doing on time? For about an hour, but I'd rather you know, go ahead and discuss what's going on here. So basically each one of these cases, these situations is switched on brand. So you're passing brand of parameter. If it's, you know, cricket newborn, it goes into here, changes this element color to blue. So I believe that's the body background. Pull it up again. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the majority of the screen. Also, it changes the, the numbers. So right here, we're changing the inner HTML. Now this is hard coded. This is something I would want to change to inner HTML equals and then cycle through these objects. That was that was my goal. That's what I'll still try to work towards. But for now, I just wanted to see it change based on the difficulty level. So this is a hard coded difficulty result. And then it also has, it changes that to two. Let me click that again. No, if you click, if you type something in it, okay, so I was trying to make it to where the user would guess. So whatever, this is a dead link, the equate window solution, changing that to two does not happen. You get the one plus one, you get the two plus two, and then the equal sign. And then, you know, that's a little white box to the left. Then there's a white box to the right where, oh. Oh, right. I have to change that as well. So I just saw the, the banner. I really got to change that. I'll do that right after this video. But anyways, um, the point of it was you see 6 plus 6 or 2 plus 2, and then you type 4 in. And then it would respond and say, yay, that's correct. Or no, that's not. And I don't know if I want to get like as celebratory as Free Code Camp does. So if you go check them out, when you complete challenges on there, it says some really motivational and inspiring like, success messages when you get the right answer or your code compiles correctly. And it's really cool. I mean, it keeps you going, it keeps you wanting to go, which is useful because free code camp is very lengthy. It takes a long time. You know, you definitely want to carve out a good chunk of, you know, set a schedule, make it like a class you're taking or something like that. And just try to knock out as many lessons as you can. I've done most of the JavaScript and most of the beginning ones, which is like um, web design stuff. Yeah, but I'd almost want to go back and redo it again because it's been so long. Um, but yeah, there's, there's JavaScript, there's a QA on there, there's Python, there's all sorts of cool stuff. But anyway, so this is the hard-coded version of this. And and here we go, new equation. Hmm. So it almost looks like I did the same thing that twice. We got switch brand, which changes the colors, the text. And what's this one doing? New equation alert so i think that was a debug statement i wanted to see if it was actually functioning so it's pop up a little pop-up window saying new equation and then global brand this looks like it's changing uh the inner html but that's also happening here so i don't think new new equation is actually being called let's go back to the html find new equation let's just do new new equation so that's down there at the bottom. Okay, right. That's where I left off on this program. So the concept behind this, I wanted to add another functionality or another function, new equation. So the first one, switch brand, that, that changes it to the initial thing. So once you click saunter or walk or power walk or jog, or any of these buttons, because that's what they look like now, um, and again, I'm going to change that. This is, this is going to be saunter. This is going to be walk. But I'll, I only want to do it once. Um, anyways, based on that, it'll send you to the initial question, which is hard-coded here. And then this doesn't 
work. New quick new window. Equate window solution. I want to say that doesn't exist. Equate window, equate window solution that is commented out. See? Oh geez, what what is this? Why why? Why do you do that? Can we get back to full screen here? There we go. Anyways, I want to point this out. So that equate window solution is commented out. It doesn't exist. So this uh, this button that calls new equation that changes equate window solution is no longer existent. It doesn't. You know, it's commented. So, but that's where the next steps would be for this pro for this project. You would want to make it to uncomment this. Have a window change it to something else, or or maybe point to. So I have equate window. I guess that's the initial. So when you load this program, I believe it populates that. That's actually where the problem goes for the two plus two. And then there's another one. What's the other one? What's, what is this? Let me inspect element. What is this? Oh gosh. Equate window solution. Oh, wait. Hmm. Okay. Name first name. What is all this? Okay. Well, that's um interesting. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but anyways, it's the box to the right is what I'm trying to get at. I was just trying to see what I call it here, kind of point it out to the HTML. Let me see if I can just, this might be an easy way to see it. So hello, and welcome to, okay, so that's the initial. So the header, the banner thing, it says hello and welcome to the Arco. Save that. Okay, so when you first get here, you go ahead and run it again. You see it from a fresh run. All right, so it lands, it's black and white. That's kind of ugly. Uh, but I guess that's neutral. So I might change those colors to something else, something more appealing. But it's black and white, and it says, hello and welcome. Then you click a button, then it changes to Broncos for Cricket Newborn, which is Saunter. Cricket is walk. That's also Bronco, Broncos because with KiwiCode, their first two categories were actually very similar. They were, uh, so there wasn't much distinction, and that's why I developed it this way. But I will change that. Maybe I'll even change the color scheme. And since now they are here, like there's technically six difficulty levels as it as is with this functionality. So you have six of these buttons. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and this one and this one, these first two have the same color scheme. So, and that's mostly all that's changing, except for, or sorry, no, there's three main things that are changing. There's the colors, the banner message, and the equation. So, the main things that you'll notice when you start clicking around on those buttons, you'll see a more difficult math problem, one of the, anywhere from 1 plus 1 through, well, actually it's hard-coded here, so. You have one plus one, and then the two, which the two doesn't show up because this is non-existent. But I was trying to figure out what that is, the, the name change to. That's the box on the right where the user would insert their answer. Anyways, um, and, I, and I did want that to disappear. I did not want it to show the answer for obvious reasons. If you have someone trying to practice these questions, you don't want to give them the answer. So, But you do want to have a placeholder for them to put the answer in, and then you need to verify that the answer equals the answer in the answer object or in the question object and that's where I left off on this project so I'll try to pick that up and maybe finish it out but anyways so those are the main things that change the color the banner and the math problem so you can do that six different ways 
Um, yeah, I said I will change all this stuff, but um, and yeah, if you take it before it's changed, just make sure you change all these animal things because that's Kiwi Co. But if you did it something else, um, you know, I think about like you know, the old Wolfenstein or Doom games, they had all the different difficulties, or even Tony Hawk, like. I think you could change the difficulties. Just different video games have them a lot. Or, yeah, you can use Saunter, Run, and all that. I don't mind. That's fine. It's open source. So, anyways. So that's basically the main functionality of this. And the reason I wanted to bring this up and demo this was because this is one of the next steps for my main website that I'm doing. Um, I want to be able to change the theme, which would just be as simple as these lines right here get element by ID the body you know I'd have to add like a, a, a an ID for body or there might be a way in fact I'm pretty sure there is a way to select body as the, the HTML element um, but either way I think I like to do this because it gives you more control like I want specifically this you know whereas if you did it with like headers that's why I changed this to h1-1 so I can still have the h1 functionality multiple times through the page but if I want if I only want to change this one's color which doesn't make a lot of sense every header should be this one so maybe that's not best practice there anyways but the main point is I would change the body color the background color or whatever to this or to whatever I want the value to be um, when I do that to the main website it's gonna be something easier on the eyes you know or maybe personal preference like I actually had a classmate in school. He changed his uh, his command line to like a bright pink and very opaque, just to do it. I mean, just to be a free spirit or something like that. Because um, I'm, I'm sure it had to hurt his eyes. It hurt everyone else's eyes when we'd come to look at his code and you know, he'd try to ask us questions on it or tell us stuff. <laughs> we generally didn't like to go look at his screen. But anyways, yeah, so it was like bright hot pink, and then you could see through it. The opacity um, was set up up yeah but anyways something that would just be useful and I've started to notice this in a lot of websites nowadays that they have like a dark mode a light mode you know and this is essentially how you would do that functionality so if you want this for your website you know just copy these lines actually yeah let's go ahead and just put this up here I'll fix it on github eventually too but I want this openly available so let's see arco math javascript there we go. So disclaimer, change it if you're gonna borrow it. Um, here we go. Arco, whoops, math.js, there we go. Because who knows, maybe you wanna take a look at this, maybe you wanna start playing around with this like today before I get to it or something, because I'm probably gonna go for another walk um, I am working on a security project right now. I'm doing some research on that. And I'll try to make a video demo of it, maybe, uh, depending, or I might just mention something about it. Anyways, that's a thing. Um, let's see, was there anything else I wanted to do for this stream? Yeah, because we're at about an hour. That's about good. Um, I really just wanted to demo the quote machine and Arco Math. And of course, feel free to dig around in the code pen, all the different projects, anything that has Arco tied to it in the name, that is something that is now hand raised and that is focused on um, helping out grade school K through 12 kids. Maybe not so much kindergarten and first grade because that stuff's a little more, you know, it's less critical, but the more complicated stuff, like especially when you're starting, starting to get into algebra or geometry, the higher math, um, sciences, you know, basically stem i mean art that's it's important don't get me wrong but that's not something you can really you don't want to teach people you want them to express themselves um I'm trying to think of like other classes history would be good um i'm going to do i'm not super strong in history or reading a language uh to be honest but um i do want to have stuff up there too so maybe some some reading practice or maybe like a scoring system with some quizzes based on that. I had this really cool uh, program in school where we read books that were categorized by different colors on their difficulties. And then we would take a quiz afterwards. And based on your score on the quiz, you got points or not. 
and then you just keep reading books and keep and there was prizes associated and that's kind of like the end game what i want to get to but like things already exist so if i can find something to link maybe link it in the meantime and then do all this stuff so i don't know but anyways hope you guys enjoyed um that's javascript fun part two and yeah and all of these are on the github like i said on the uh go ahead and throw that in the chat again so go ahead and you can go to the GitHub README, which is this, which it actually doesn't even fit on the screen, but those are all the links to all the sites that I've been talking about in the last JavaScript video, as well as this JavaScript video. And again, feel free to borrow the code, play around with it, you know, and integrate it to your own projects. If there's anything useful that you can use, have at it. It's fun. It's free, um, or it's fine, and it's free. It's open source. Um, but really, I'd say these are more projects to where they're not finished, so it might be some practice for you if you wanted something to do where you could actually finish the project and have that on your own code pen and just be like, look at this is it. And then, you know, maybe make something to say that, like this code is based off of code from from Alex, Al Gore, whichever alias. But again, not super worried about it. Oh, and the teacher lottery is in there too. That's the very first link in the readme. So that one, I don't give a rip at all if you mention my name or not. If you can make that idea happen, do it. That would be awesome. Get those teachers paid. Um, yeah, it's just a fun idea. If I had a lot of money, that's what I'd be doing. I'd just be like, I, I wouldn't let them know who's doing it because I don't like the, you know, the attention. But um, I think it's just awkward and uncomfortable. But I mean, just having like a company or a name. So, and that's why it's set up as a business idea. You can take that. It's a, I, those are the ideas or the thoughts that I've thought, um, kind of the corner cases I've tried to consider if someone were to make that a business plan. So it's a very rough business plan. And part of my degree was business uh, with a focus on international business. So it is structured in kind of a business mindset. Granted, I don't have any professional experience, but just something to think about. But if you take it, you know, look at it, you can improve on it. Great. If you can make it happen even better. I don't care if I ever hear, I mean, I'd like to hear about it, but I don't care if anybody hears about me associated with that. If you can do it, do it. But anyways, that's my spiel on that. I digress. Um, let's see. Chat pause due to scroll. That is just a weird thing. All right. Well, I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.